I, I, you want to hear a funny story about resonance? Yes. Okay, this is the last time I took LSD. Okay, I already love it. You mentioned Terrence McKenna earlier. Yes. I had been reading Terrence McKenna, and a friend of mine who is associated with the Grateful Dead got in touch with me, and he said, I, I've got some of this amazing LSD from you know the guys around the dead to this guy who made acid for the dead. And it's like, do you want some? Like, wow. Of course. I mean, it's like, you know getting holy water from jesus or something wait wait you're talking about owsley well no this is recently okay okay yeah, yeah this was uh this was i don't know 10 years ago or okay so um anyway so so i've got this this liquid acid and and <sighs> i've got a friend who's a psychiatrist in barcelona who you know back in the day used to order lsd from sandos and have it shipped to him and you uh. know, he was one of these guys um, and so I told him about it, and he said, "Oh yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to try that." So he came by my place, and and uh, I gave him a sugar cube, and we put four drops on it. He asked for four drops, um, and then he wandered off. And a couple of days later, I talked to him. He said, "Oh, it was great. It was very clean. You know, very great." No, no, he took three drops, and um, so I had been reading Terrence McKenna and the whole thing about heroic yes. messages and the little green man and all that. Yes. Stuff. And I had done a fair bit of hallucinogens in my life, but I had never seen any little green men. And um, you know, I my my approach to to drugs and to you know riding motorcycles and parachuting and whatever is like do dangerous things safely. You know, I cool. love doing dangerous things, but I don't like getting hurt or killed. So, right. so I try to be very smart about doing dumb things. <laughs> okay. You know? And uh, so, so I, I, I don't like do huge doses of anything. I tend to be very moderate and sure. But I, I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to do this many more times in my life. I've sort of, I've, I've been there enough that it becomes to me it's something to do very respectfully. Yes. And when you've got what you need, you sort of back off. And um, so I thought, you know, this might be the last time I ever do this. So I'm going to really go for it. So I took four. And I wandered off into the woods with this friend of mine, and uh, he was really like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta walk, I gotta walk. I'm like, okay, you walk. I'm gonna lie under this big tree right here with its big, beautiful branches on this summer's day, and I'm gonna lie here and look at the, the way the leaves are fluttering and the blue sky, little bits of blue sky through the leaves and the, the force of the tree, and, the, you know, and I just got really into it. And, after a while, I started to feel the vibration, that sort of vibrational energy of the tree. And, and I could like bring my own brain vibration into alignment with the vibration of the tree yeah. and, and get that resonance. And when, when I felt it aligning, it was like my body would just go... And yeah. I would get this, like a brain orgasm would start, right? Wow. And it was so intense that I was afraid I was going to fry my brain out. So I would like, whoa, pull out of resonance with it. And like, oh, wow, that was amazing. Wow. Let's see if I can do that again. And, and like, you know, bring my resonance in. And then, whoa, yeah. again. It was, so I was like lying there being fucked by this, brain fucked by this tree for <laughs> I don't know how long, right? Until I just couldn't take it anymore. And I said, okay, I got I to gotta walk. I got to get up. And so I got up and I walked out from under the tree. And I was walking down this trail. And, and I heard this, this humming sound. And it was like the, the vibration of the tree is following me. Are there helicopters or what's going on? I look up in the sky. And right over this tree that I'd been lying under are high-tension power lines. Whoa. I thought I was fucking nature. I was being raped by industry. Holy shit. Yeah. You were tuning in to the power field above the tree. Right. And it was making you, like, fry out. <laughs> it was frying my brain, apparently. And that was the beginning of a really bad trip. I mean, I've, I've tripped a fair bit, and I've had some weird shit happen. I mean, I was told once that I was... I was stung by a scorpion in Guatemala on top of this temple, and I, had, I was tripping at the time, and a guy told me the scorpions were fatal. So I've had some bad trips. Okay, I'm going to stop you there, just because you have to be the coolest person on earth. <laughs> because what you just said is so funny, man. I was, I was tripping uh -huh. on top of a temple. The Jaguar Temple. In, in Guatemala. In Tikal. Yeah. And got stung by a scorpion. Yeah. That sounds like something 
that sounds like lyrics to a Rolling Stones song. <laughs> Sympathy for the devil. Yeah, it's, it's the worst. Yeah, Man, yeah. I cannot imagine that trip. That is a legendary, that a legendarily a bad trip. That was a that, good trip. No, that was a great trip. So you were, okay, you're saying. So wait, let me finish the other one. Okay. Okay, so, because it. I won't go into a lot of detail, but it started with that. Like, oh my God, I thought I was, you know, it's like, it's like a, a Thai she male or something. You know, you think, you think it's a beautiful woman and then you get, right. and it's like, wow, <laughs> wait a minute. That old problem. <laughs> it happens to everybody. Um, but yeah, so, so, I mean, it was terrible. So then I, 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 I was really high, like really, really high. And i I'm the guy, I'm always the designated driver. I'm always the guy who answers the phone. I'll deal with your parents. I'm, you know, whatever comes up, I'm right. the guy who will like, uh, I can get normal when I need to be, right. right? But in this case, I wasn't feeling normal at all. So I'm running through this forest. I lost my shirt. I've got shorts on. I'm sweating. I'm bleeding from all these, you know, the briars I've been charging through in a panic. Thinking there are helicopters <laughs> flying around, thinking I've uh, destroyed my brain with all this uh, electromagnetic fucking I'd been doing, and I, 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 I'm lost in this park, right? And I hear <laughs> from one direction and <laughs> in another direction, uh, and from another direction, a Spanish woman saying, "Oye, Pepe, venga aquí. Oye, qué haces?" what the fuck is going on? I'm surrounded by these weird like voices and then this woman. So I get under a bush. I'm hiding under this rhododendron bush, sweating, <laughs> bleeding. I'd been crying. You know, I'm a mess. This is intense. And I'm thinking if anyone sees me, you know, God, I, I, there's no way I'm going to explain this. <laughs> I just, so I got to hide, even though if they see me under the bush, it's even worse, yeah. you know? But I'm hiding, and these voices are mulling around, and then the voices sort of gather, and, and they start moving away. So I come out from under the bush, and I come, and I look. I open these trees, and I look. There's this big field and a big mansion in the field, and there are these two mental patients walking back with the nurse. They, it's a mental hospital. I'd wandered onto the grounds of a mental hospital. This is truly the worst trip of all time. That was pretty bad, yeah. Like, if there were awards for bad trips <laughs> well, each year... But that have to, the nurse would see me and take me into the hospital. That would, that would, That's the next step. <laughs> That's the way it ends, right? Is you think you were having an LSD trip, and then you realize you're just in an asylum, and every fucking day, <laughs> every day. you think you relive this thing where you have to yeah. get dragged back into the asylum. That is a crazy... Yeah. In fact... What if you're an escaped lunatic and like you just fabricated this story and that's your escape? That was well, you know, there was a study, a famous study done. I think it was in the '70s, where um, a, uh, I think it was PhD psychology students. Their professor said, "Here's the experiment you're going to do. You're going to check yourself into a mental hospital. All ten of you, Ugh. check yourself into a mental hospital. Tell them you're hearing voices. You know, whatever you're feeling, uh, break from reality." Spend the night there. And then talk your way out. None of them could talk their way out. The doctors wouldn't believe them. So the next day, they say to the doctor, no, listen, I'm a, I'm a grad student. This has been a thing, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm fine. This was just a test. Our t my teacher, he teaches here at Harvard, da-da-da. No, no, no. Nobody believed them. The professor had to go. I don't know if it was 48 or 72 hours. He had to go to the hospital and say, listen, you've got someone here. It's my student what he's been telling you it's wow. true and it was to demonstrate how helpless you become when you're a mental patient right when you admit you've got a problem suddenly everything you say is suspect yes yeah it's the worst and this is this doesn't just happen in mental asylums it happens in fucking relationships man it's like you end up in a situation where the expectations have become so extreme and so crystallized that there's no way to talk your way out of it you're always going to be the bad person or you're always going to be uh -huh. this way even if you've changed even if you've shifted there's just no way out once someone's decided to right. allow the expectations you've to been labeled You've been labeled, yeah, yeah. and it's really hard to get out from under labels. And that's, that's the micro-tyranny that is responsible for so much of this uh, guilt oppression that's happening all over the planet. And um, I, we don't know what the solution is for it, but 
It's definitely not tripping on the grounds of a mental asylum. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to cut to a commercial or anything? No, no, man, no commer- no, commercial. No, I mean, no. Oh, okay. We do them in the beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just I threw commercial a commercial. I, I threw a commercial in the middle of the last podcast I did, and like a swarm of complaints. From, oh, really? Like Jesus Christ, man! Like you can skip ahead yeah. if you don't like something. But anyway, man, I, this one is this is going on for a while anyway. But I want to finish the story of you on top of a temple getting stung by a scorpion and thinking so you're going we have time we, have, we definitely have yeah, time because yeah. we you can't just say the beginning of that and not finish that story <laughs> first question uh-huh. how did you end up on top of a t- temple can anyone go up to the top yeah, of the temple yeah yeah i was i was i told you i'd backpacked around the world for 15 years yes or so, right and um I don't know if, if it's a bad idea to admit this, but I had um, LSD sewn into the seam of my backpack. Not a bad idea to admit that. And so I would go to interesting places, and often at the full moon, Taj Mahal, for example. Yes. There's a place in southern Mexico called uh, Monte Alban, outside of Oaxaca. And I would go to these places and... Uh, often with people I'd met on the road or whatever. And in the case of Guatemala, I was with my girlfriend at the time. And, um, you know, sort of be there for the rising of the full moon, the setting of the sun, you know, the special kind of moment. So anyway, okay, this place is... Were you doing that for anything other than aesthetic reasons? Were you doing that because of some metaphysical idea that you could... Like an astrological idea? No, 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 no. It's just, you know... When I was traveling, I I sort of marked time by full moons, and I like to be in a cool place for the full moon. Okay. So, you know, I remember being in Kashmir in northern India uh, on this houseboat and a lake in Srinagar and thinking, okay, next full moon, I want to be at the Taj Mahal. Cool. You know? And so sort of work it out. And when a cool thing about those years that I learned is that, you know, this notion that you know, time goes faster as you get older and all that, it, which is true, but you can slow time down by traveling. Huh. A month, that month from, from Srinagar to the Taj Mahal is like a year in my life currently. Interesting. So, you met so many people, you have so many experiences, you have so, your life is so rich with novelty. And right. Really, time is a measure of change, right? In a vacuum, time doesn't exist because nothing's changing. Right. Right? So, if you can pack your life full of interesting changes you stretch it out cool yeah that makes a lot of sense man it makes a lot of sense right 